We shall continue to learn how to analyze the results in Trisco and how to calculate thermal-derived parameters such as equivalent U-value and linear thermal transmittance. We first would briefly discuss the meaning of these parameters. For walls between an indoor and outdoor environment consisting of parallel layers the heat transfer is one-directional. The heat transfer through this wall can be calculated using the formula. Q equals U multiplied by S multiplied by delta T. Where Q is the heat flow rate from the wall, U is the thermal transmittance, S is the heat flow area, and delta T is the temperature difference between indoor and outdoor environments. The heat transfer coefficient U value takes into account convection, radiation, and conduction. Thermal transmittance, which is the U value and its inverse to the total thermal resistance of the wall. Since the layers are in series, we add up the resistances. Total resistance would not just include resistance of construction layers but also includes resistance due to surface exposure to the air at indoor and outdoor environments. Practically, there are three types of heat transfer. Heat flow is linear 1D when passing through parallel layers of walls. But when there are thermal bridges, Heat flux deflects at the region of these thermal bridges and causes either 2D or 3D heat transfer. 1D heat transfer is evaluated based on the thermal transmittance which is the U value of the wall. In case of linear thermal bridges where the heat transfer is 2D are evaluated based on the coefficient of linear thermal transmittance which is the psi value. Point thermal bridges where the heat transfer is 3D are evaluated based on the coefficient of point thermal transmittance chi value. If a system has 2D or 3D heat transfer, we can find the equivalent U value and evaluate the heat transfer through this cross section which has thermal bridges. For complex systems, where there are repeating thermal bridges, we calculate the equivalent U value for a module which takes into account thermal bridges within the module and then add up the impact due to linear thermal bridge and point thermal bridges between different modules. Using similar calculation done for equivalent U value, we can calculate the total heat transfer coefficient for the entire component consisting of various modules. Now we will learn to calculate the psi value which is the coefficient of linear thermal transmittance for a wall. First we will find the 1D U value of the wall stratigraphy. We have seen previously, to calculate this 1D U value, we will add up the resistance of each layer to find the total resistance of the wall and U value will be the inverse of this resistance. Next, we measure the heat flow through the wall which has a thermal bridge, in our example, a metal stud in between. We then find the psi value by the equation mentioned here where we divide heat flow rate with temperature difference and subtract 1 du value multiplied by width of the heat flow surface. Here we calculate coefficient of linear thermal transmittance psi value per meter. Hence height of the wall under evaluation would be 1 meter. Similarly, we can also calculate coefficient of point thermal transmittance chi value. We first calculate the 1 du value and then measure the heat flow rate through the wall. Then we find the chi value using the equation mentioned here. With this brief understanding of physics concepts, we will try to explore how we evaluate these parameters in Trisco. At Edit menu, choose U values. We get one directional thermal transmittance which is a 1D U value along the mentioned axis and the desired extent of the analysis field using minimum and maximum coordinates. In our example, heat flows along Y axis and we get the 1D U value. You can close the U value window. If you also close the block window mistakenly, you can reopen it from the edit menu and choose blocks. Next, at edit menu, choose areas. Here we can see the recognized areas defined by two points with their minimum and maximum coordinates. Sometimes, especially in case of complex geometries with more than two boundary conditions, Trisco might not be able to recognize accurately the areas and domain for 1D U values. Hence, it's a good practice to define areas and U values before analyzing. However, for standard cases you can use the auto detection of 1D values and areas of the flanking elements. At Calculate menu, select Initialize Areas and U Values, so that visible automatically selecting the areas and 1D U values for the geometry. 
Now we define output parameters required from the analysis. At the Edit menu, choose Derived Thermal Properties, say we wanted linear thermal transmittance due to the metal strip and equivalent thermal transmittance of the composite wall system. Now we click on Analysis and you see the result. Click on Text Output. At the Results tab, you can now see the output for derived parameters like Psi value and equivalent U value. You can also see the heat flow through the cross-section for the temperature difference defined in the boundary conditions. 1D U values and areas for calculation. Now close the text output window. Trisco automatically uses text output and graphic information to generate an analysis report once you click on Make the Report. Once Word file opens, at Add in menu choose Trisco Load. Here at your file location you will find a.trx. Once you choose that, the Word file will be updated with the auto-generated report. This Word template file can be customized. You can find this template under Documents, Visible, Trisco. Here you notice the default template file. You can customize this report further. To add view or analysis images in the auto-generated report, at the Edit menu choose Graphic Report Definition. Once the window is displayed, you can toggle Yes to by double-clicking Create an Image. Choose the projection of your image, say Perspective. Trisco will automatically take the view angle using azimuth and altitude for the perspective image as the view is currently displayed in the image window. You can choose which of the lines you wish to output in the current image. Say, object lines and isothermal lines. Choose how you wish to fill your image, we chose to fill with temperature for temperature gradient, other options include heat flux, areas, fill off, material and boundary condition. We choose to display the legend, hence we turn it on. If you wish to see what these outputs look like before you enter the data for graphic report definition, you can explore each of these at the graphic output window. At the top toolbar, you can click on each option to visualize this. We have already done this in the previous video. Now, close the graphic output window. In the next step, we will adjust the geometry to obtain a 3D situation for which we will calculate the point thermal transmittance. At the Grids tab, create minimum grid. Select the first grid mesh in the Z domain, at the Grid menu, and click on Split. Choose Border 1 and 2. Define the mesh width as 49.5. So we get a grid of one unit at the center in Z direction. At Blocks window, we redefine Z axis extents for 6th block, which is defined with color 13 representing steel. Change Z minimum to 1 and maximum to 2. Now we create a steel rod passing through the wall, creating a pointed heat transfer. At the grid menu, choose Auto Split to prepare the grid for analysis. To find the point thermal transmittance, which is the chi value. At Derived Thermal Properties using 2D slash 3D Thermal Surplus Thermal Transmittance represents this value. Here at the text output we now get the resulting value for the derived thermal properties. In the next video, we will learn to analyze the thermal bridge effect due to corner joints. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.